you are at a session called 30 Real Life Affiliate Examples. Um, I actually, right off the bat, have to tell you that you've been lied to. It's been rebranded yeah. as a large list of affiliate tools because in the time that it took to actually put this together, uh, the number 30 was just not enough to uh, really represent what I actually found. So we're actually going to be looking today at a list of about 48 real life affiliate tool examples that affiliates can use right now to represent the products of an online retailer. Uh, I, of course, my name is Ted Waite. I'm the marketing manager for AutoLink.com. I'm hoping that all you in back get to see me. Uh, I hate standing behind a podium. I'm like really hyper like that. So I'll be kind of pacing back and forth. Um, you can reach me on Twitter and my email. Um, my Twitter is at Chad Waite. My email is cwaite at autolink.com. Uh, this is, like I said, a list of the many available tools that are out there for affiliates to do their affiliate marketing. I am pretty confident that this is not even nearly close to a comprehensive list. Uh, so if you guys know of any tools that are missing on this list, let me know. Tweet me during this or after this or send me an email. I'd love to know what I'm missing here. Um, I also want to point out that this is the very last time I'll be mentioning a, an affiliate network by name. Um, the tools on this list are, of course, going to be uh, developed by not only networks, but also third-party tools. And in, in the spirit of being, uh, you know, staying away from any sort of bias, uh, I'm not going to be associating any tools with any specific networks. That said, there is a reference screen at the very end of this slideshow that has, uh, you know, where you can get information on each and every tool that we talk about. So at the very end, uh, especially if you guys um, are on the slide share, you can find this presentation on the Affiliate Summit slide share. You can get that, uh, that reference screen at the very end of this presentation. So. Okay, so what are we gonna look at today? Well, first off, I wanna start by explaining a little bit where this uh, presentation came from. I'm a big SEO guy. Um, I really like SEO. I think it's a pretty crucial element to um, understanding uh, you know, online marketing. And there is a company out there called Moz.com, formerly SEO Moz.com. I'm pretty sure anybody here is an SEO fan. You're probably very familiar with them. And they have a, a gentleman who works there named Dr. Pete, an eccentric young fellow uh, who does a lot of really, really great presentations. And at their last uh, um, company uh, conference they had called MozCon, he put together little presentation called Beyond 10 Blue Links. Now, Beyond 10 Blue Links basically took a, a look at the very many ways an online or um, a website could rank on a search results page, specifically from Google. And it's interesting because this, uh, this well, first off, he took what he called the, um, the Franken SERP right here. So he went and he, he got you know, these screenshots of every single different way that searching for a brand or a product, or in this case, he searched for the word tacos, um, and how that word can be represented on a search engine result page like this and put it all together. And the interesting thing was, with this presentation, he kind of went through every single individual way that it can be represented and just pointed it out. And after I saw this, I was like, man, I don't think I learned anything new, but I have a totally new perspective on this. You know, it was this nice aggregated list of all the ways that, um, that your website can actually show up on Google. Um, if any of you are SEO fans, by the way, I really recommend taking a look at this slide here because it's just kind of mind-blowing. It's, it's certainly not an elegant uh, presentation. He just kind of takes a lot of information and just beats you over the head with it, um, which may be a good thing. Unfortunately, if you don't think that sounds appealing, that's kind of what's going to happen here in the next hour. Um, but down here, uh, you've got um, bit.ly slash 10 blue. So if you are interested in this, um, definitely check that out. Uh, it takes a while to go through because he has like 110 slides. Fortunately for everyone here, we only have about 60. So we are going to be racing through this. Um, so after I saw that, I thought to myself, why not do the same for affiliate marketing tools? I mean, there can't be that many tools to represent a brand, right? Uh, uh, and in fact, as I kind of indicated in the beginning, I thought, you know, 30 would be probably a good roundabout number to cover it. And even in this list, we're at about 48 right now. And that doesn't even, I have a feeling that's just kind of the tip of the iceberg, but there's a lot more out there. Um, so what you're about to see, of course, is a glimpse of a wide assortment of tools uh, your affiliates can promote your brand and products with. Um, if you are an affiliate here, I hope that you do find some new tools that you may be interested in uh, using in your, first, your uh, future affiliate marketing efforts. Now, we're going to be breaking these tools down into five kind of very, very high-level uh, um, categories here. The first, of course, is going to be basic network tools, uh, those tools that are offered um, on pretty much every network, major affiliate network out there. Uh, Product-driven tools, tools that I would consider to be non-static. I know that's very general, but these have to be. Um, 
Fourth, there's going to be data feed and coupon related tools. And finally, um, I would feel that this would be an incomplete presentation without talking about um, social media channels and how uh, we find a lot of affiliates use those in their day to day marketing efforts. So let's start. Let's take a look at um, part one. We're going to look at the basic network tools and we start with what is essentially the, um, the most common, this is the quintessential tool of the affiliate marketing. So these are the um, I'm sure that for everybody here, this is not your first time seeing this. If it is, um, welcome to Affiliate Marketing. Uh, image and banner ads have been around. These are Genesis, and uh, there's a lot of different shapes and styles and colors and interesting things they can represent. Um, I would even go so far as to say, if there's somebody who doesn't quite know what Affiliate Marketing is, if you were to say, what is Affiliate Marketing, they'd still probably be like, oh, those are banner ads on the side of blogs, right? So everybody knows this stuff. To complement that, we have text ads. Those course, the next major ones, and text ads are generally the non-fun um, uh, copy of banner ad. You know, there's no visual uh, component there. It's just written out text to you know represent some sort of product or sale or whatever it may be that the merchant wants to configure here. Oftentimes, from a net per network perspective, what we see is that for one banner ad, there's usually a corresponding text ad that covers the exact same thing. And just like banner ads, these are very popular among affiliates. Um, the way you can use them is pretty much limitless. I mean, you know, if you can find something that matches up with your content well, there you go. Okay, next is video ads. Um, video ads have been around a while, and again, from a network perspective, we don't see a very high adoption rate, but they are out there. Um, one reason for the lack of adoption rate is, you know, the attention span on the internet is what? 20 seconds maybe at most? I mean, if you really have somebody's attention. Um, and opposed, you know, when you stack these up to something like banner ads, the effect is immediate. When you look at this, you know, when you look at this Fanatics ad right here, it's like, oh yeah, Fanatics, there's my shipping, there you go. It took me two seconds to get all of that. Whereas video ads take a much more interactive approach. You have to watch a video. You have to be able to not only, you know, view what's going on and have the patience to get through it, but you also have to click on it again. Now, there is definitely, um, a, you know, very large group of affiliates who like video ads. Uh, in this case, this is a great example of um, Wise Company, they do food storage, and they put together an awesome video on you know, the, essen the essentials of kind of a basic food storage uh, you know, supply for three months, and then they also talk a little bit about um, you know, why you need it and how it works. And um, It's a great video, and there's certainly time and place for that, and of course you'll find video ads on pretty much every major uh, network out there. Flash ads. Um, personally, not a big fan, but there are uh, affiliates who do like it. Now, flash ads are interesting because these generally kind of take banner ads one step further. Now, with a banner ad, um, unfortunately on here I can't show you because the, you know, it doesn't support GIFs, but a lot of these were GIF banner ads, so they'd kind of rotate through a couple different images. Flash ads, on the other hand, are a little bit more interactive in that you can have a lot of moving elements, you can have a lot of things going on, shifting backgrounds, in fact, this one down here, if this was working, you'd see the background shifting, the, clo um, the clouds blowing by, and then uh, the snowboarder kind of going down the mountain. So there's a very visual, very entertaining element to it. Um, the flash is a little bit bulky though, and for any iPhone user out there, I know the flash is a dirty word. So a lot of affiliates tend to stick away from it, especially if they have a lot of uh, mobile visitors as well. Um, HTML ads. Now, a lot of networks offer the ability for merchants to go ahead and create ads based on HTML that they've written. And a perfect example is what I have here, a screenshot from a company called Golight. They do a lot of really lightweight uh, outdoor equipment. And in this case, what they did was they wrote out this script to basically say, okay, we want somebody to be able to drop this little bit of HTML on their site, an affiliate, and you know, it's gonna show a couple different things. Uh, first off, up here we've got a top-selling product. You know, some new jackets that we have in. You know, even if you were to just cut this little segment out right here, that's a beautiful banner. You know, really interactive. It's a product level. It's showing price. There's a lot of information that's being conveyed in there. But then in this ad, they've also kind of shown another top product they have, as well as some information on a new retail location they had opened up in Durango, Colorado. Now, this is just kind of, again, the tip of the iceberg for HTML ads. There's a lot of stuff you can do with HTML ads out there. Uh, from a network perspective, we've seen retailers go ahead and code things like search bars, uh, so, they can, so the affiliate can put up a little search bar and allow the visitors to search for different um, products from each and every, you know, from their store. Um, we've seen, I don't know, it's pretty limitless. If you have an IT guy who has some downtime and wants to get, you know, 
a little bit crazy with some code, and you have the ability to create HTML labs available for your affiliates, do it. Data features. Um, these are second to uh, text data and banner ads, pretty close race there. Data feeds are essentially an entire product catalog that represents the product offering of an online retailer. Um, each and every product has a lot of information associated with it, price, description, product name, sale price, whatever it may be. And affiliates can go in and download, download these data feeds and manipulate that information to whatever they see fit. Um, price comparison engines, product searches, um, there's a lot of things. It's pretty much limitless with what an affiliate can actually do using data feeds. And, um, you know, if affiliates who use data feeds, there's a lot of them out there. I mean, you have your bloggers and your kind of non-tech savvy, you know, they're, they're good at maintaining the community over here. And then on the other hand, you have the real tech savvy people who can dive in and manipulate information like this to create very, very nice affiliate tools. Um, custom slash deep links. Now, they're going to be called different things on different networks, but this is interesting because this allows me to get very granular with how I advertise as an affiliate. Um, of course, a custom link will, be, will allow me as an affiliate to go ahead and create an affiliate link to a very specific page on a retailer site. So if I'm up here and I'm uh, looking at AutoZone and you know, maybe I'm wanting to review a new uh, you know, mobile one oil out there and I'm like, yeah, this is a great oil, it protects my car, blah, blah, blah. And I actually want to link directly to that page. Well, I can use these network deep linkers to go ahead and create a very specific affiliate link that leads directly to that individual product on AutoZone's page. Um, the strategy here is, of course, if you're mentioning a certain product in your content, you're actually referencing, or maybe even a brand, um, you can go ahead and create a custom link and embed it in your content to correspond with any mentions of that brand or product. Now, to take this one step further, these are becoming very popular. These are bookmarklet deep linkers. So essentially what these are, are they're little teeny um, bits of JavaScript that you drag up into a bookmarks bar. So you can kind of see up here, uh, hopefully the people in back can see, uh, I've got my bookmarks bar right here, and I've dragged uh, this little bookmarklet right up here. And what happens is when I go to an online retailer's page, a merchant that I'm an affiliate for, let's go back one. I'm here on this AutoZone page looking at this Mobile One Oil. Instead of copying the link, logging into my network, and creating the deep link through that interface, all I have to do with these deep linkers is just click. Go to that online retailer's page and click. You click that and then it generates the corresponding URL right there. Um, now, these aren't available on all networks, but I would probably guess that in the next year we're going to see a far larger um, amount out there. So um, bookmarklets are nice too because they're universal. Um, since, they're based on, since they're based on JavaScript and you can put them in a bookmarks bar, it means they're not browser dependent. So anybody with a browser anywhere that uses JavaScript, which is of course every browser, uh, can use bookmarklet deep linkers. Um, deep linkers that originate from plugins or add-ons or extensions, depending on what browser you use. Um, these are things that just tack onto your browser. They often do the same thing that these deep linkers do in that once you visit a merchant's page, an individual page on a merchant's site, you can go ahead and click generate a custom uh, link through one of these plugin deep linkers. And um, with this, you'll get your custom link right then and there. They also have a lot of other functionality depending on which one you're using. Um, a lot of affiliates keep on top of their affiliate marketing efforts. So if they're wanting to look at things like ad impressions or click-throughs or how their day's activities are going, um, a lot of times the add-ons or extensions or plugins allow that aggregation of information. So as an affiliate, I can get you know, a report on my activities without necessarily having to be logged in to my, um, my account on whatever network it is I'm with. Okay. So that was it for um, network-based tools. Let's take a look at product-driven tools. And I'm gonna grab a drink, because I need water. Okay, product-driven tools. Um, first and foremost is going to be the network product widgets. Uh, network product widgets are interesting because they allow affiliates to go and select individual products and put them in these really customizable widgets to display those individual products. Um, now, you can see the formatting is a little wacky here, but this thing down here, product ad widget, is a perfect example. Uh, say I am a blogger. I'm reviewing some very specific gear in my content, these uh, cycling pedals, this uh, tire pump right here, and maybe some good cycling gloves. And I'm mentioning them in my content. That's great. I have a great review on it. 
But how awesome would it be if I could actually take those products and represent them visually below my content? The stuff that I'm actually directly addressing in my review. And that's what these network product widgets allow you to do. They allow you to select those individual products and put it in a very highly visually impact um, display right here. Now, I'm willing to bet that if you were to pair this little widget down here versus just a static banner ad on the side of your site, which one's gonna get more attention? Where are your eyeballs gonna go? They're gonna go to this. And each and every one of these widgets allows you to customize a lot of different um, information in it. You can have the picture, the name of the product, the uh, merchant that's actually selling it, product descriptions. And for the most part, this stuff's completely customizable. So if you're looking to really kind of visualize you know, the products that you're actually representing as an affiliate in your content, Network product widgets are the best way, hands down, to do that. We see these, again, from a network perspective, have very high conversion rates just because if it's just a supplement to the content that the reader's already read on an affiliate site, that's great, that's fantastic, and it's very visually appealing. Okay, we're gonna get into our first third-party tool. This is not a network tool. This is from an awesome company called Prosperant. Um, I know they're gonna be here at the show uh, tomorrow, so if you don't know the Prosperant guys, make a point to seek them out and talk to them. Um, this is one of their tools they have called performance ads. Now performance ads is a really cool little widget that you throw up on your page and what it does is it has an algorithm that contextually analyzes your content as an affiliate. And basically, you know, this example that they had said pink tux shoes here. So obviously in the content as an affiliate, I mentioned pink tuxedo shoes. And the Prosperant performance ad goes in there and analyzes my content and puts in automatically products that correspond with the stuff I'm talking about in my content. Uh, furthermore, they actually have moderate retargeting capabilities as well. So the ability to retarget certain products using affiliate links. Um, I believe, I'm not mistaken when I say that's the first for the industry, but guys, if retargeting has just been brought to the affiliate space. Pretty cool stuff there. And Prosperin, um, they're not a pay to play, they do some sort of commission split. Um, so if you are just looking at, you know, just dabbling around with some of their tools, check them out. Really cool stuff there. Cellfire, another third-party tool provider. Um, Cellfire is very similar to product widgets from the networks, but this time they get really, really specific in how you can configure the way your widget actually looks. Um, you'll see here that I've just kind of gone through and configured this one to uh, uh, show off a couple um, Burton Custom Flying V snowboards. And this is a very basic layout. I've done a little two by three grid here, and I've chosen to display the picture, the uh, name of the product, and the price. Cellfire's real silver bullet here, though, is that they allow you to get super specific on how that information is actually laid out. So do you want the image up at the top and the price on the left and the description to the right and all the stuff you know, that's remaining on the bottom? Um, you can do that. You can make full grids. You can make one grid. It doesn't really matter. They get very, very, very granular with the you know, customization that they allow you to do as an affiliate. Um, Cellfire also has one free implementation of this. So if you're looking to kind of play around and get familiar with the tool and you're an affiliate, check it out. If you're a merchant, Check it out. It's nice to know how the tools you know, can be used to represent your brand. Um, anything after that, of course, uh, you pay to play, but um, definitely check out Cellfire. Very, very cool system there. Um, deal of the day tools here. So this is a deal of the day uh, example from uh, thehouse.com. I'm actually going to use uh, quite a few of their, their examples here. They, they do a lot of uh, um, really good stuff here, especially with the deal of the day. Um, this is interesting because from a network perspective, we see deal of the day also have very, very high conversion rates because it not only pairs a really good deal uh, you know, with, um, or it not only represents a really good deal, but it also shows that there's a very specific time frame. You know, if you want this deal, you need to buy it within the day. It is a deal of the day tool. Um, the house has done a good job of creating this deal of the day tool with um, a nice looking template here, and you'll also see that they say today only. So not only is it deal of the day, but to reiterate that, it's today only, duh. Um, you'll also see that they have a sale price highlighted and a regular price highlighted here. Um, so it's time bound, and there's a great deal right there. And we see across the board major conversion rates with deal of the day tools because it's got a lot of really good things working for it. Now the nice thing is once an affiliate throws this on their site, it's automatic too. The updates just keep going. So anytime the deal changes on a 24 hour basis, boom, that content will change on the affiliate site. So for them, it's kind of a, I hate to say fire and forget, but um, that's really what it is. They can put it on their site and it'll run forever. Uh, one interesting thing on that is um, just kind of a strategy that we've, e that we've seen some affiliates use, and that is full page deal of the days. So they basically act as aggregators. Um, you know, here's, here's a great example of um, you know, a site that goes through and it actually you know, aggregates out all the deals of the day that they can find. And 
a lot of times we see that bloggers will actually have a little site or page on their site that says like check out our daily deals and they'll create this full page grid with all these deal of the days and it's great you know it's kind of a great resource for their visitors to say yeah like I you know I like what you're talking about and I want to see some daily deals that may be related to your content um, this is a cool tool hover it uh, hover it in the time that I put this together till now hover it was actually bought by a company called slice um, their little icon, um, or I'm sorry, not icon, add-on, is not working anymore as Hover It, and I'm not entirely sure what Slice plans to do with it, but Hover It had some really cool functionality. Um, it's basically an add-on to a browser, and what happens is anytime you hover over a specific image, and this is best represented in Pinterest here, um, this little Hover It icon pops up right there. And what happens is their system can analyze the picture and basically cross compare that photo with all other photos through merchant data feeds. And say, okay, this uh, product is, you know, that's the exact same picture as, uh, you know, this merchant has in their data feed. And what happens is when you click on this little hover it button, another little pop-up comes here that has price comparison tools versus all the merchants that have that individual product. Basically, it's image recognition affiliate marketing. Very cool stuff there. Um, I wish I had a better example of this, but since the uh, hover it button actually uh, broke when Slice uh, took them over, um, it's a little bit hard to get a better example than this, but I'm hoping Slice will reintroduce this and uh, make it better than ever. Very powerful tool. Um, Fuse Pump product widgets. So Fuse Pump's a, a cool company. They do a lot of different things. Um, this is just one small example, but I thought this was a really interesting example of a product ad widget that's been real consolidated. Now, when we looked at product ad widgets before, you'll notice that there are a lot of different products. And so if you're an affiliate and you're concerned about space on your site, this allows you to consolidate it just a little bit. You can see here, you know, we've talked about um, you know, different men's t-shirts uh, from this particular merchant, the t-shirt shop. This is just some high-level example they had. You can see down here that I have navigation options within this widget. So I have three shirts that I've picked out, and if somebody's curious to know what the other ones are, I can use this you know, navigation stuff to rotate around these products. Um, now, Fuse Pump, um, I'm not entirely sure what their pricing structure is, but that's a very powerful tool. I mean, if you want to put up a lot of these that correspond with you know, content that you've written about, maybe I'm a fashion blogger or something, and I'm talking about my favorite new shirts for 2014, um, this is a great way to consolidate a lot of products into one little area that's really, really, it's a great little interactive widget. Um, the buy button. So the buy button is a tool that allows you to, to configure a small buy button, this thing down here at the bottom, uh, that says buy now. And what happens is, is when you click on it, it pops up this pop-up that is populated with products based on a default search that I as an affiliate will choose. In this case, once again, just to demo this, um, I chose the Burton Joystick Snowboard. Um, and what happens is when somebody clicks on that, say I'm doing a review on a Burton Joystick. Um, I'm like, man, I really, really like these boards. These are awesome. Um, you know, they the handle great, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Buy now. This pop-up comes up and once again um, scans the data feeds of all the merchants that I am currently an affiliate for and then puts the cheapest options first. You can, of course, have different sort options, so best match, percentage off. Um, it also shows a little bit about sales as well, and you can do any other searches for any other products. But it's a great way to add a buying option for a certain product that you're talking about um, without having all the products displayed on your screen. Just a little buy now button, and then it pops up into something completely separate. Of course, each and every one of these products is an affiliate link that's taken from a data feed, so any uh, you know, referrals will, of course, result in commissions. Um, product content widgets. Product content widgets are these nice little things that you can uh, um, wrap around certain words in your content um, that go, you know, if I'm talking about right here, you'll see that I'm talking about this uh, um, jersey, this Endura Pro Jetstream 2 jersey. Uh, what I can do is when I actually mention that product in my um, content, I can, I can put some, um, some HTML tags around it, like a span and a class that designates a certain um, class to pull up a product content widget. And what you can do with that is you can offer things like price comparison. So if somebody hovers over that, it pops up and offers a couple different merchants that actually sell that, or it can give some additional detail on that individual product. So you're talking about details, maybe coupons that the merchants offered on that product, um, reviews, and of course, price comparisons. Okay, let's take a look at non-static tools and link converters. 
Um, this one's kind of a weird fit. Uh, network APIs. I didn't quite know where to put this in the agenda, so I just threw it in here first. Um, network APIs are a great way for an affiliate to, to perform regular um, functions from a network, like maybe getting a certain ad or doing product searches through data feeds without having to do it through a, um, the interface of the network. In this case, um, you know, I've taken some screenshots of basic API request builders from different networks. Um, if you don't know what API is, uh, Wikipedia is there for you. Um, don't worry about this slide. If you do, you know the value of, um, of APIs. They're great. They're a great way to streamline processes that could take a lot of time or, other, or otherwise be mundane if you, you know, do them over and over and over again. Okay, skim links. Uh, skim links everybody's probably familiar with. Uh, what they allow you to do as an affiliate is sign up uh, for their tool, and what happens is you can put skim links on your site and have it then look for static links to merchants that you as an affiliate represent. Or I guess technically that they represent. They're, a, they're kind of a super affiliate and then have these uh, you know, affiliates operating within their umbrella. So what happens is when this uh, particular uh, affiliate right here, they run a forum, um, they put skim links on their site, and somebody, somebody on their site, on their forum, said, hey, look, there's this great sale on UGG Classics right now. You can get them over at City Sports right here. Fantastic, right? Good. That's a static HTML link, and it's something that they're not going to be capitalizing on at all unless something goes in and changes that link into an affiliate link. And Skim Links does just that. It looks for static occurrences of links and converts it into affiliate links automatically. Now, the real kind of you know, uh, quintessential example here is anybody with a forum, okay? Somebody who's generating lots and lots of content, and maybe not themselves as the, as the affiliate, but they have a community who's just pumping out all this stuff. But if you're a blogger or a forum or any type of site with a lot of archived content, and even better, a lot of uh, static links like this, there you go. Skim Links is a great way to automatically get all of that archived content into an affiliate uh, link. They also have a nice little tool called uh, the Automated Keyword Conversions. So right down here, you'll see that there's, uh, in this shot, they referenced a PowerShot Elf 300. And what Skim Links does is it looks for high-level products like that, and when it finds them in the content, it associates them with not only an affiliate link, but kind of this pop-up thing that shows a little bit of detail on the individual product, as well as price comparison for them. Um, Viglink is another one that does the same thing. In this shot, you'll see that they have actually recognized the, um, the brand name for a particular, I'm sorry, the product name for a particular um, uh, iPhone cover case here. Uh, another one called the Affiliate Link Encoder. Um, this one allows you to do specific keyword conversions. So if you, as an affiliate, have certain keywords that you know pop up a lot in your content, you can go ahead and actually specify what keywords you want converted and where you want those um, conversions to go. So in this case, I just use this one, snowboards. Um, I want it to go to a page with snowboards. I can choose where the link actually sends uh, my, anybody who clicks on it. Um, of course, the Affiliate Link Encoder also does static uh, URL conversion in content. Okay, this one's cool. Uh, pop shops. Um, in text ads. Now they of course have the, um, the name recognition there, so if they see the name of a merchant they'll uh, put, that, put an affiliate link with that merchant name. Uh, but better yet, they have something that I haven't seen anywhere else in the industry, this really cool image recognition software. Where I as an affiliate, if I put this pop shops tool on my page, I'm not entirely sure how it works if it looks for like maybe the name of the actual image and then cross compares it to merchant data feeds or if it actually looks at like the build of the image itself. Um, but somehow it says, okay, this is image is right here in your content and we found the same image on a merchant data feed. We're gonna take the affiliate link that we have for that image in the data feed and append it to your product right there or your image on your site. So that way it becomes you know, visual affiliate marketing. It's an automated you know, link generated for all of the images on your site. Really powerful stuff there. I think that's really, really cool. So that is uh, the Pop Shops in text ads. Uh, Prosperant, again, Prosperant is uh, making their second appearance on this list. They have uh, something that, that's very familiar to the link converters that we've looked at before. Um, here they reference a shop.nordstrom uh, link, and that, of course, was automatically converted by their link affiliator. 
Um, down here, you'll see that they also have the ability to do a phrase linker around certain words. So if I'm an affiliate and I know that uh, I, want, um, I want the best affiliate link option to be associated with these words right here, so maybe uh, you know, there's a bigger brand that's selling it with more name recognition or there's something that has a sale, I can, do, I can put certain span tags around whatever words it is that I want to use or that I want to convert as an affiliate, and the Prosperant Phrase Linker will come in and automatically convert those words with the best affiliate link option, at least at the time. Um, Yieldkit. This is one that I'm not too familiar with. Uh, I just heard about them right before I submitted this, um, th this presentation, so it's kind of last minute. But they have another, um, you know, another very similar product that goes in and identifies individual um, products and gives you information um, on that product. Now, Personally, I think this is beautiful. I think this is a really, really good looking pop-up. You'll see that there's some information on the iPhone that they have as an example here. There's a picture, there's a description, and of course, most importantly, there's an automated price comparison to this. Now, YieldKit, again, I'm not too familiar with, but it seems like a very powerful tool, and from an aesthetic point of view, I think that is great looking. Um, the dynamic deal feed. So this is a tool that uh, basically allows, in, the easiest way to explain it is an RSS feed on an affiliate site of sale or promotion or coupon related ads that a merchant will configure. So if I am a, uh, an affiliate and I like you know, backcountry.com here, and maybe I don't necessarily log into their program every day and check their ads and see that you know, there's a new sale or promo related ad out there, I want it automatically delivered to my site when those ads are created. So what I can do with the dynamic deal feed is configure that. Again, basically it's our RSS feed that I can put on my site and anytime backcountry.com now puts out a new ad that is sale or promo or deal oriented, it gets automatically aggregated out to my site. Now in this example, we of course uh, use text ads, but this can also be done with banner ads as well. And just like the deal of the day tool, it automatically updates all the time. So it's for all intents and purposes, fire and forget. Um, this is a really cool add-on to this. So with the dynamic deal feed, you have the ability to do ad RSS syndication. Um, meaning that if there's a certain merchant that my visitor likes, so say I'm running the dynamic deal feed for fanatics.com and I'm aggregating out their latest and greatest sale promos and somebody visits this and they're like, well, maybe I don't want to visit your site every day, but I'd certainly like to get these ads as they come through. You, they can actually subscribe to those ads and get them delivered to an RSS reader that they use. And this is kind of interesting because to me this is one of the very few tools that takes affiliate marketing away from the idea that people are coming to your online presence as an affiliate and you're kind of invading their quote unquote personal online space. Um, the RSS reader is, is a very intimate tool in the sense that if you use it, you have given permission for certain sites to aggregate content out to you. Um, and it's kind of a fundamental shift in how affiliates can actually reach their end users with their affiliate links. Because of course, when these ads are aggregated out through RSS, that is, that is a, uh, um, an affiliate link right there. So anytime that ad gets pushed out, there you go. Um, cool vid linker. Now we're kind of getting into monetizing video. So if you're an affiliate who does a lot of uh, video, um, content, you're probably familiar with Cool and a couple other ones that we'll talk about here in a moment. Now, Cool acts as an iframe within an iframe. So if you have an iframed version of a YouTube video, you go to their system, drop it in, and basically it's another iframe kind of over it. And what it allows you to do is associate certain links, um, you can put in affiliate links, with certain videos. So up here, one of their examples was kind of, you know, talking about a bike, yeah, here's a bike, um, and if you like this bike in the review or whatever, purchase that bike. Down here is a real version. Um, this was talking about some uh, makeup application, and uh, you can see down here that um, whoever was using this decided to uh, put beauty.com as the person that they're advertising with the cool vid linker. Let's take this one step further, though. This is a really, really cool tool. It's called Viewbix. Um, Viewbix was brought to my attention right before I submitted this, and I personally think, with my limited experience with it, that this is the best way to monetize video out there. It's really cool. Um, so in this example right here, you'll see that this is a video for the, um, 
It's Christmas gift for cats at the DC Animal Shelter. Now this isn't necessarily immediately related to affiliate marketing, but you can get the sense of how it would apply. Um, and with Vubix, much like Coolinker, it operates as putting a video within an iframe. And you can put within that Vubix iframe a bunch of different you know, links and apps and you know, functionality there. Of course, here you can say donate now. Now let's kind of switch uh, places here. Say I was actually reviewing that bike that we were just mentioning in that cool video, and my, uh, you know, my bike's in here, I could say buy now and have that link out as an affiliate link to you know, whatever merchant is selling this. Now, over here on the right, though, this is where Vubix really kind of separates itself. They have a ton of different apps that you can also put in to the iframe to allow a lot of different interactivity for the end user. So right here, there's a couple examples. Um, click here to donate, um, join our newsletter, information about the DC Animal Shelter. There's tons of them, though. Like, if you wanted to share on Facebook, if you wanted to share on Twitter, lots of social integration. I mean, if I recall right, they had like 20, 25 different apps that you can actually put in here to make this thing more, you know, give it more interaction. Um, one other nice little side note about Vubix is if you were to share this video on Facebook, this entire video right here, um, I am not entirely sure how this works, but all of this functionality, this Donate Now and all of these apps here would actually carry over into a Facebook feed and show up there. So if I'm on Facebook and I'm looking at my friend's feed who shared this Vubix video, I can still hit this Donate Now um, button within that Facebook feed. Really cool stuff there. That's an entirely different engagement level on a social uh, network than you had before without Vubix. Um, one other thing too with Vubix real quick, they do have one free subscription. Um, so if you want to go in and try you know, the video out, if you, again, if you're an affiliate who does a lot of video content, check them out for sure. Really cool stuff. Um, a tool called the Ad Rotator Plus, and I've actually synced it up in this example with Deal of the Days. So what the Ad Rotator's goal is, is to make it so that, that ads on your site are never the same ads when somebody refreshes or visits your site again. It's always rotating through banner ads that you as an affiliate select. Um, with this, of course, you can also insert deal of the day tools that automatically size to whatever uh, size of ads it is that you're rotating through. Now, every time you refresh a page, and I did it three times with this example, it took different, um, you know, configure or took different um, displays of, you know, the number of different ads that were actually showing up and deal of the day tools. So one time I visited the page, it had one ad right there and three deal of the days. Of course, the big one, two different banner ads, two deal of the days, and then down here had three banner ads that I selected, and then one deal of the day right there. So it's a nice way for an affiliate to be able to put this on your site and to not have the ad stay the same each and every time. It cycles through it, and plus, with the deal of the day, you kind of get a whole other dynamic in there rather than just using exclusively banner ads. Okay, let's go ahead and look at uh, data feed and coupon-related tools. Uh, the first one is a name that I'm sure most people in here are familiar with, For Me to Coupon. Um, I believe they have a booth either in the meat market or in the expo center, so if you get a chance, go talk to these guys. Um, they have a very cool tool called the Deal Aggregator, and essentially what this is is a nice way of getting all new coupon-related ads from merchants all put into one place, so you don't have to log into your network and manually search through each and every um, each and every uh, program that you're an affiliate for and get the ads and put them in your systems. Instead, this is an aggregator across the board. A lot of different um, merchants that you can pull this in from and it's a very easy tool to use. They also have a really cool WordPress plugin. So if you're a WordPress blogger and maybe you want to um, promote a certain, um, you know, I, I don't know, a promo code for a certain brand, uh, that's what you can do with their WordPress plugin. Can't give you too many more details on that. Talk to them if you would like. Um, I, admittedly, I don't quite know how to say this. I don't know if it's Cupilla or Cupilia, uh, but Cupilia does relatively the same thing. They are an aggregated feed of um, coupons from merchants in one big consolidated list. Um, Cupilia's claim to fame here is that they, they're very uh, bare bones, very here's what you need, get on with it, um, and they also have great pricing structures. So if you are looking at a good coupon aggregator, Cupilia is a great option there. Um, one tool called the Web Service Data Feed Client. Interestingly enough, this is a great option for affiliates who like the idea of working on a product level with data feeds, but maybe don't have the technical expertise to do just that. Um, so what this example is right here is an affiliate who really likes the campsaver.com affiliate program. So a lot of outdoor products. Um, and in this case, they're actually a blogger. They do a lot of reviews. Uh, what happened was they had a little um, area on their site that said gear. 
So gear right there. So if I'm reading and I want to shop gear, I click on that. And what they've used is the web service data feed client, which essentially means that they can put this entire store on their site within that tab. And what the store does is it operates under the same product taxonomy that if you went to Camp Saver. Okay, so if you go to Camp Saver, you would see all of their products bro um, broken down by climbing and footwear and kids and men's and run. And you click on run and it'll go to you know, men's running shoes and women's running shoes. Well, that same product taxonomy is still available in this, um, in this web service data feed client. So it allows them to basically replicate an entire store on their site. Now, um, there are some SEO um, um, kind of impacts here, um, but you know we, we make sure that the um, or if you're an affiliate, make sure that you're not duplicating any content. You can um, you can you know kind of take a page off of like Google from being indexed or whatever. Just make sure you're taking the right cautions to not uh, be you know dinged as having uh, duplicate content. Um, you can one other kind of neat thing with this one is they've not only made this for campsaver.com, but they've also put a bunch of links to other web service data feed clients for other um, programs that they would like to represent too. So maybe I'm not a campsaver uh, fan, but I can go down here and click on um, dog funk right here if I want to look at snowboards. And I can click that and I'll be taken to the same thing where the products in the actual store section directly represent that of what's on dog funk's store. So that's again a great way to utilize data feeds if you're an affiliate who may not have the technical ability to utilize raw data feeds. Um, pop shops again. We're going to be looking at one called the storefront. Now, these are very similar to the ad widgets that we were looking at before from networks. Um, but what pop shop does is it allows you to create kind of a, a grid as large or as small as you want with um, certain products that we hope correspond with the content on your page. Um, in, the, oops. in this case, um, we're looking at you know, a lot of. Uh, um, different items for, I forget what the shop was about, but it worked really, really well with their content. And it was interesting because this actually looked like a full-on store retail page on their site. You know, I didn't get there and I didn't look at some little widget that was talking about some content, but I actually clicked on this and it looked like a full-blown store on their site, even though they were just an affiliate site. And it's very interesting because now that it's at a product level, I'm seeing all sorts of information about the product, prices, um, the images. And for me as the end user, it really feels like I'm on an actual retail site because there's this whole entire store storefront right here. Um, PopShops also has an awesome coupon and comparison API. This is really cool because the comparison API allows you to set up an area on your site as an affiliate to instantly search for products and get instantaneous price comparison. So in this case, once again, I uh, searched for Burton Custom V Fly and Snowboard and uh, their comparison API came up uh, with every single product that matched that query um, through the data feeds that I'm an affiliate for and gives me the price, image, details, and a bunch of other um, information on that particular product I was searching for. Um, the Golden Can product search and data feeds. Uh, Golden Can has something very similar to what we just looked at with, um, with the Pop Shops API. Um, in that up here, I can put this on my site. I can search for a particular product, in this case, I searched for Peyton Manning Broncos jersey. Um, for any of you from San Diego, I'm really sorry about what's going to happen to you in a couple hours. So <laughs> maybe I just made some enemies, right? So for any Broncos fans, welcome to the club. Um, of course, this uh, this uh, Golden Can product though now returns. Um, any, any products that match my search query, and you'll see that this is actually pretty diverse. It shows a number of different Manning jerseys from a number of different retailers. Um, just like any other tool, it's going to show the picture, the price, um, the actual uh, description of the product, and then, of course, most importantly, the link, the affiliate link right there. Um, Golden Can also has a coupon feed, very similar, similar to the ones that we looked at before, where you can basically get an aggregated list of coupons and deals from uh, merchants that you'd like to represent. Data Feeder. Data Feeder is another tool that does something very similar to the Pop Shop storefront in that they allow you to configure these really nice spreads and grids to create a store, quote unquote, on your site. Um, in this case, this was a yoga related website that had um, you know, a lot of products talking about individual um, you know, yoga products that you need to be a yoga master. Um, you'll see here that you know, it shows not only you know, the description, the price, of course the name of the product, um, but you can make this as wide or as small as you would like. So once again, you can make it so that it feels as if your end user is actually shopping on you know, your own gear site. So if they click on gear, it looks like you as an affiliate are running a retail site because it's very interactive and there's a lot of information on each individual product. Um, iCodes, can't say I know too much about them outside of they are another program uh, that does um, a deal feed, a deal um, aggregator and coupon feed. 
Snap Searcher. Snap Searcher is another tool that allows for um, basically instantaneous product comparison. Uh, what's really cool about this one is it's real time. So this, in full disclosure, this is actually a little site that I run called GearComparison.com. You guys can actually go there and test this. Um, but this uh, Snap Searcher, what it allows you to do is um, go up to this search bar and basically type in any product or brand name that you'd like, and it puts in the um, corresponding search results right there. Now the nice thing is, um, this is all real time though, so if you're searching for, you know, Ultra, it's gonna pop up any shoes that, related, that are related to Ultra. But then if you go Ultra Lone Peak, without having to like click search or anything, it automatically updates the results to say, the Ultra Lone Peak running shoe. Um, you can of course sort this by, you know, low and high, high and low, uh, percentage off, and then it's also a very visually um, striking uh, uh, search or gear compare or sorry product search tool right here because you see that when you click on one of these it automatically does this really nice expanded view that shows a little bit of detail in the products as well as how to share this um, through your social channels. Um, a new one. This is once uh, another tool that. Um, I was introduced to right before I submitted this thing called Price Tapestry. Um, not entirely uh, sure if I even said that right. Hopefully it's not Tapestry. Uh, up here though, you'll see that it's another product uh, search and price comparison tool. So up here, I've searched for a specific TV. And down here, um, it shows some really good detail on the TV. So not even, ha not even having the individual details for the TV listed in the actual search results and the price comparison, but you get this really nice section up here that's specifically talking about that individual product before affiliate links are even introduced. So now I can see a nice picture of this. Um, you know, I've got a full, uh, you know, full description of it, and then the first uh, and best price is down here right below that description. Of course, there's a number of other areas where you can actually go ahead and um, search for that or get that product from, as well as related products, which is kind of a really nice uh, thing that this does because if I don't like this particular TV, maybe I don't want 60 inches. I decided I actually wanted 90 inches because that's clearly not enough for me, 60 inches. Um, so now I'm gonna get my related products down here and maybe it lists that 90 inch TV. Okay, um, final thing here. Let's talk about how affiliates can use social networks to represent your brand. And this stuff's pretty straightforward. I mean, everybody here's probably pretty familiar with tactics that affiliates do use on social channels, but again, it's good to kind of look at every aspect here. Um, Facebook, of course, the big granddaddy of them all. Um, this is a screenshot of an affiliate who has talked about a wet diaper bag that you can hang off the crib. Now, the affiliate, of course, runs a, um, you know, a, probably group about talking about, you know, newborns or something. Um, but the really interesting thing here is they talk a little bit about the deal, you know, 56% off today, whatever. Um, here's the link, and then it kind of gives a quick summary of what the actual product is. Now, I really like this because this, this example just goes to show that if you have an engaged community, and people who are really passionate about what you're talking about in that community, affiliate marketing isn't so much marketing as just a supplement to a lot of the conversations that are going on anywhere. Because if you look at some of the comments, I mean, one of the, you know, one uh, lady replied, I have one of these and they're amazing. And you know, I have three of these and I love them. And there's 39 people who like this. Like that's a lot of really good interaction around what is essentially an ad. Um, so props to this person for uh, making this very cohesive with the purpose of their, um, of their group. And if you are um, you know, a merchant and you're looking to work with um, affiliates like this, hopefully they're this savvy in tying in what they're marketing with the content and purpose of their community. Uh, Twitter's another great example here. If you're looking at this, uh, this particular person kind of asked for, um, she said, I need new snowboard pants, and she's of course tweeting out to another Twitter user, I want new snowboard pants, I want them to be looser fit, rooms at the angle, any recommendations, Burton. And the person that she tweeted to instantly replied back and said, hey, do you want something insulated? I really love these, and then put in the affiliate link here, uh, from Patagonia for extra room and warmth. Great, suggestion right there on Twitter, really quick, back and forth, uh, makes a really good suggestion based on what this user wanted, and that type of stuff happens all the time. YouTube. Uh, YouTube, of course, if you're an affiliate who does a lot of video content, you're probably very familiar with putting in affiliate links down here at the bottom, but this particular person has done a uh, backpack review, and down here in the um, description, they say buy now, and they put in that shortened link. Now, one interesting thing here, and if you are a YouTuber uh, and you do this type of thing, don't put your link at the bottom of the description. Don't talk about it first and then put it all the way at the bottom, because YouTube now shrinks your, um, your description. So this person has wisely put it above the fold. Um, so the first thing I see when I look at the description and the two lines that are available before I expand it, he's now seeing the affiliate link for that particular backpack this gentleman's reviewing. Um, Pinterest, another great one. Uh, this affiliate has put up a uh, picture of <laughs> that shoe. Um, 
Teach your own, right? Uh, so kind of given a little bit of commentary on this. I really like the shoe, blah, 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 here it is. Um, and then, of course, the affiliate link down here. And in proper uh, compliance, they disclose that this is actually an affiliate link. So golf clap to that affiliate right there. Um, finally, last thing here, I wanted to talk a little bit about how search engines can be used um, as a tool for affiliates in a very bad way and then in a way that's, um, that's a better way, so to speak. Um, Hopefully everybody here, is, if, you know, merchant or affiliate, you're familiar with the idea of um, trademark bidding and kind of poaching on domain names. Um, and there's an example of this right here. Um, we searched for a particular uh, merchant, SinclairInternational.com, and the, one of the very first results in the paid section was an affiliate who was bidding on that search term. So they're bidding to have their affiliate link placed on the side for the term Sinclair International. And that's detrimental to the merchant because in this case, um, you know, they're bidding on a, a brand name that that brand has worked really hard to get right up there in the organic search results. Or they're paying for their own PPC on it. So why would they pay, you know, an affiliate to go ahead and bid and just kind of do a quick referral back to the merchant through an affiliate link? Um, that's bad. That's, that's how to use search engines in a very bad manner. Let's take a look at a better way. Uh, this is search engines through long tail searching, okay? So the example here, as we've got a Patagonia black ultralight women's jacket, and then I want it to be a small and hopefully a sale. So that's a very, very, very specific uh, search query right there. Very long tail. Um, and right here we can actually see that there's an affiliate bidding on this that redirected um, the uh, user to thehouse.com. So that's, that's a better way to actually utilize search engines um, in your affiliate marketing efforts. And for any affiliates who may not be aware of this already, uh, just be aware that most uh, networks uh, do not like this. Trademark bidding, big no-no. Um, and most of the time you will get kind of punished for that. So uh, just make sure if you are using search engines for any sort of PPC affiliate marketing that you are um, trying to really go after kind of these long tail, uh, really niche specific topics that are at least rele you know, relevant to what you do too. And that is a large list of 48 affiliate tools that we just went over. Once again, my name is Chad Waite, uh, Marketing Manager for Avonlink. Please let me know if you have any questions. I'd be more than happy to answer them. Uh, you can get this presentation on SlideShare, and here's a list of references for everything that we just looked at. So thank you, everyone. Thank you. Mm -hmm.